Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Here we'll see the difference between onInit and onReady function of getx. This could be confusing for beginners. Now here I have uh, logs over here in both functions as you can see. Now onInit and onReady method, they both get called very early in getx lifecycle. Not only in getx lifecycle, also in Flutter widgets lifecycle or Flutter frameworks lifecycle, they get called very early but they have an order, certain order. Now definitely on init method gets called first and then on ready method gets called. Now we'll go ahead and restart the app so that we can verify this from our console. Now apps have been restarted over here and we'll see that here it says that on init and we have a name over here and on ready. So with this we verify that on init method gets called first and on ready method gets called later. And at the same time, we see that first when your user has been created, right after that on init method gets called, and when it has been initialized, then on ready method gets called. All right, now over here, at the same time, first we have to take a look over here, the variable that we have declared. We have a variable, its name is name, and it's OBS type, which means it would be reactive. And first the value, the variable value is null, but later on we have updated the variable value in on init method okay and this one gets called first so the value is assigned and we know that on ready method gets called later so the value has changed and then we also see that in the console over here now if you take a look at the official document over here it says pretty much the same thing it says that on init method gets called after the widget is allocated in the memory so when widget is allocated in the memory, then this one gets called. And over here, it says that on ready method gets called after one frame later. So first on init and one frame later it gets called. And it's also a perfect place for navigation events, snack bars, dialogues, new route, or async request. All right, so over here, it didn't say that what you could do, but here it says that yes, you could do some initialization for the controller like the variables and things like that. Of course, you can also do network request, like a sync network request, uh, which I have covered in other tutorials. Right, so this is so far we have seen over here. Now, at the same time, if you see our variable value on our UI, so the last one has been shown over here. Now, if you restart the app over here, we'll take a look. Well, it's been restarted and nothing changed. Let's confirm it one more time. So over here, let me restart the app and we don't see that over here there was this Ahmed, right? It's always Dylan. Now why this happens? Well, first thing we can confirm that this value has been actually called from our UI. Okay, we can confirm that. Now to, to be able to do that, first over here inside this we can create a log. So since our widget has get view and the controller type, so from the UI, we can access the name variable and its value using this controller object. Now there's a new log and in the log we'll see that we have this value Ahmed when we uh, restart our app. Let's go ahead and do that. So here we see that on init method and Ahmed and then build method. So over here this one, so we still see that Ahmed, right? But on the UI we didn't see that. Now, why not? Now, that's because over here, if you click over here or put the cursor on it, you will see that it says one frame. Now, the only difference between these two is only one frame, the way they get called. So this one gets called first, and this one gets called later, one frame later. And what is one frame time? Actually, it could be 0 0.10 milliseconds, it could be 10 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds. It happens extremely fast because in general, our UI gets updated between 30 to 60 frame. So in that sense, it happens extremely fast, even if it's 100 milliseconds. It's so fast, our human eye can't really catch this. So it goes on the UI, but one frame later, on ready method gets called and it gets overlapped by the new value, which is Dylan. Okay, so this is one thing we have to confirm. And at the same time, you we can confirm that actually in our build method, inside the build method, 
we can grab the value if you want. But at the same time, we also confirm that onInit method actually gets called before the build method, right? Because you see, by the time when we have this onInit method and the value is printed, we don't say this one, okay? So with this, we confirm that build method gets later than onInit method. OnInit method gets earlier than build method okay so this is what we confirm and this is beautiful and this is you have to know and if you know this you know where to initialize your variable how to initialize when to initialize and how to grab them so a lot of time you may have value in your on init method but you might not be able to get them on your build method because build method comes later so this is what you have to know now if we have on ready method how about this one of course, on ready method from here, we can confirm that it gets called after build method, okay? After build method, as you can see it from the log over here, okay? So what's the idea? What's the take away from this? So the take away is that first on init method gets called, you can initialize your variable, and then our build method, which is in our UI, and after that, on ready method gets called. So you can put your variables in your on init method but if you have the same variable on your on ready method then the new value would overlap the values in your on init method so that's what you have to know a lot of time you guys say that on init method doesn't update or things wrong that's because you don't know in what order they work and how fast they work so this is the basic idea and also the most important idea about on init method and on ready method thank you